Hey, this is Charlie, and I'm going to go over hanging sheetrock, uh, planning for it, mudding, taping, what you need, uh, what you don't need, um, what would help, what you can do without. Uh, I did my entire garage uh, two years ago. It's a 64 by 40 shop. Um, it was my first time ever hanging sheetrock or, or mudding and taping. Um, I had to do a lot of research online, a lot of practice to find out uh, what worked, what didn't work. Um, and I'm just going to go over kind of my process and, and what I use. Uh, so before you hang anything, it's, there's really a lot of planning uh, involved. You've got to get all your outlets where you want them, uh, figure out where you want your, your switches. Uh, you got to have any kind of fans. Do you plan on hanging anything on the wall like a TV or a garage door opener, uh, maybe a, a hose, uh, in, anything heavy. Um, that you'd benefit by adding some kind of bracing between the studs because the time to do it is before you hang the sheetrock. Um, so I added support for the TV. I've got some support behind that uh, wall where I'm going to have a garden hose hanging. Uh, you need to plan when you do your wiring too. Like this is a, a two by four wall. Um, when you run your, your wiring and you staple it down, you don't want to staple it over near one edge or the other because uh, when you're putting a screw in from the side, you could risk screwing into it. You want to try to stay as centered as you can. Um, obviously, there's got to be some times where uh, you can't do that if you have multiple wires crossing or it's got to go behind an existing um, electrical box. Uh, so I'm always very cautious uh, when, when screwing near an electrical box. I'll, I'll make sure I, I don't go too close to it. Uh, you can see up here, um, I say fan vent. Uh, I, I know I've got a four inch uh, kind of vent hose in there that goes to uh, my bathroom exhaust fan. Um, I don't wanna risk screwing into that over on the edge. Uh, so just be kind of conscious where you want things. Um, a lot of planning is involved. Uh, for your, your electrical boxes, uh, these have a little nub on them. They're meant to kind of line up on, on the wall. Um, I find that they're drastically too, too far in. Uh, the bevel on the side of any two by is, is kind of throwing it off with a nub set. Um, so I like to pull them out a little bit, uh, depending on the thickness uh, you use. Um, you, could, you could slide them out even more. Um, it's a lot easier to do that than to go back and have to add three or four spacers or use longer screws behind your behind your outlets. Um, when it comes to buying sheetrock, they'll sell it in different uh, lengths. Uh, there's 8 foot, 10 foot, 12 foot, 14 foot, 16 foot. Uh, you're not going to be able to go to one store and get uh, any of those uh, or all of those sizes. Usually different uh, stores will sell. Um, different lengths, like they may have 8 and 12, or this other place may have 14 and, and 8. Um, 8's pretty common, I guess. That's probably everywhere, but the, the larger lengths uh, are not as common. I use 16-foot uh, sheets when I did my garage. Um, you're going to want to consider, do you need normal sheetrock? Do you need moisture-resistant sheetrock? Um, that's what this green board is. It's going in a bathroom, um, so it's moisture-resistant. Uh, there's got to be some debates on, on thickness. I like to use the thicker stuff. They're gonna sell it in half inch or five eighths. Um, I like to use five eighths. Uh, this green board though is, is actually half inch just because neither Lowe's or um, the Building Home Center near me sold it in, in five eighths for some reason. I assume it does come in five eighths. Uh, but I, I like to use five eighths just because it's, it's stronger. Um, it, it'll be, be quieter. Uh, it'll hold in um, heat better, and, it, and it's just it's just it's just stronger. You're not gonna get like a wavy uh, wall, especially on the ceiling. If you if you've got insulation up there, kind of pushing it down, it's not gonna want to sag um, over time. Uh, so my ceiling is uh, 24 inches on center, uh, and I ran strapping to make it 16 inches on center, and I used uh, five eight sheetrock. So it's kind of uh, the best of, of every world. Um, I find the strapping is kind of the way to go, especially on a, on a ceiling, maybe not so much for the walls. 
uh, but that'll give you two and a half inches or three inches um, to try to hit the strap versus trying to hit uh, the inch and a half edge of the two by. Uh, you don't need a whole lot to, to hang sheetrock. You need the screws, obviously. Uh, you're gonna want a uh, cutter like this, this kind of sawed tooth. Um, you can actually stab it through the sheetrock uh, by twisting it and then cut out for your outlets. Uh, what I like to do with my outlets, um, here they're actually in plywood, but it's kind of the same concept, is I'll measure over and I'll find the edge and I'll subtract a little bit to give me some space and then I'll measure down from the top. Uh, so I know my two measurements. So I know how far over it is and how far down it is. And then when I go to transfer that on, on a sheet, um, I'll, I'll make my top mark, I'll make my side mark, I'll put an actual empty outlet box there, I'll slide it down and over just a little bit to add some spacing, and I'll mark the other edges. That way it's only two measurements uh, per outlet box versus trying to do four. Um, if you don't have an extra outlet box, you're only about a dollar or so, you might as well get one, but you could also kind of measure out your own, cut it on a piece of wood and, and transfer that everywhere. Uh, so what else? Uh, the, the first thing that you are going to want to do is, is the ceiling. Um, and there's going to be some debate, do I go against the, the strapping or trusses uh, or studs or, or do I go with them? Um, it really depends. Uh, it is a much better finish and, and I think it's stronger if you go horizontal. So you're going uh, side to side across all the studs. Because um, if you do go uh, vertical or, or, or with the studs, um, you're only going to hit two or three um, of them and there's there's less chance uh, or there's more of a chance for them to kind of angle one way if a stud sticks out or not. Um, when you use like a, a eight foot section spanning uh, six or seven studs, it kind of uh, spreads, spreads it out, it, it contour, contours better. Um, and I think you'll get kind of a nicer finish. Uh, but there are exceptions. Um, I did the ceiling here. Uh, this is 16 inch on center and I went with the trusses. And the reason I did that is uh, one, I was hanging it myself um, and I was able to kind of nail a board on each wall and lift it up and, and slide it over on top of the board. Uh, and it gave me kind of some clean, clean seams. Um, so I'm only gonna have uh, four seams on the top and I didn't have to try to uh, have a seam split that uh, exhaust fan or, or try to cut around the wall too much. Uh, so there are exceptions, um, but any time that you can kind of go horizontal, uh, that's the way to go. When you're hanging sheetrock, you also want to pay attention to where your, your seams line up. Um, so you wouldn't want uh, the edge of the sheetrock here, and then your next piece that comes on top, you also wouldn't want the joint there. You're gonna wanna stagger them. Um, that way, uh, the wall's stronger, it's less likely to, to crack. Um, you also don't wanna have a seam like end on the corner uh, of a doorway, because it'll, it'll crack there. That's kind of the, uh, the weakest point if you put mud in there. So you're better off uh, spreading it um, and, do, and do the whole cutout. That way you don't have a, a seam even above the door or on the corner of the door. You wanna be uh, away from it. And when you do your, your doorways, um, you can just put the sheetrock right up over the entire, the entire entranceway. And then you can use uh, the same tool that you used for, for outlet cutups. You can, you can go up one side to the top up the other side, and then you can score the top of it, bend it, and uh, cut it. You don't have to cut all the way across with this tool. When it comes time to, to cutting sheetrock, I just said you score it. Uh, it's just a sheetrock knife. Um, you are gonna use some kind of ruler. Uh, I'll show you what I use. And you'll make a straight line, right? And then you can get to the back side of it. It's a little tricky, do it in it one hand, and you'll bend it, and you, you heard it snap, and you wanna bend it up, and cut the back side. 
and that's going to give you uh, kind of a nice straight cut. You only need to score it once. Make sure your knife knife is sharp. Um, the exception to that is if you're if you're trying to cut kind of like a sliver off of something, you're not going to be able to score it once and and snap it. You'll probably have to go uh, down it four or five times to dig in more um, before, and and cut it. And this is what I use. Uh, it's just a T square. Um, that's what I use for scoring. It goes the whole length of a or whole width of a piece of sheetrock. Uh, and I'll measure over from the end how far I'm going. Um, and I won't just mark it once, I'll mark it twice. I'll mark it on the top and I'll just push in with my razor blade. I won't, I won't use a pencil or anything. And then I'll do the same on the bottom. And the reason for that is there is a little bit of play in these, these T squares and you could technically be off like an eighth of an inch or so. You wanna try to get it as close as you can. Uh, when it comes time to put the screws in, uh, there's a special tip that goes on the drill and it's got to push it in just, just a little bit. It's not going to cut through the sheetrock or tear it. You want it inlaid. You don't want it sticking out um, the edge of the sheetrock because you'll, you'll see it. You'll, you'll notice it when you go to mud it. Um, it'll, it'll scrape the screw head clean. Uh, so you want to make sure they're, they're inlaid uh, enough. Um, when it does come to mudding, I'll keep the screwdriver in my pocket, and if I if I do run into one sticking out a little bit, um, I'll blame my friend on it, and then I'll I'll turn it in a little bit. Uh, there's different kinds of uh, joints here, so this is, I guess, what they'd call a butt joint when a piece of sheetrock goes up against uh, another piece of sheetrock, kind of two cut ends, um, and these are the hardest ones that that come to mud. Will will get there. So when you're planning, the less of these you have, uh, the better. So if you have uh, like a six foot section of a wall to do and you have three two foot sections of scrap, it may not be worth just using that and putting it up there because then you're going to have more seams. For $15, you get a full sheet and uh, cut it down to six feet and, and not, not have those two extra seams. When you look at sheetrock, the actual edge of it, you'll see it, it bevels uh, down right here. And, and they call those the flats edge. And it's meant to help bury the tape when it comes to taping it. Uh, so you'll, you'll be able to tape it and you'll be able to fill in that, that kind of uh, lip that it has there with, with mud. And it'll, it'll provide a, a, a good fit. So those, those are good. That's that's kind of what you want, and that's partially why I did my ceiling like that, as, as I said. Uh, so the other thing that I'll do, uh, and it's, it's kind of important, you wanna get a, a clean install. Um, when you're measuring something to, to fit, I said you don't, you don't wanna have your, your, your seams uh, let me see, find a good example. Like right, right here is a, a seam of, of uh, sheetrock. You wouldn't you want to have uh, another one right here. You'd, you'd want to stagger it over to at least the next stud or, or even further. Um, when it comes time to uh, mating them and, and doing the butt seam, you want to split. You want to split the stud. You want to get it in the center. And it's not always going to be this nice. Right, so you've got a, a really, um, a really big ceiling. Uh, I forgot what those trusses uh, span. I think it's 40, 40 feet, and that's a, that's a long ways. And I know I've got strapping uh, put up there, but it's as possible those boards can be wavy. So if I'm putting another sheet on and the sheet's four feet wide, I'm going to measure. Uh, the length I need to right here, to the center of this one, and then kind of a little ways down. I won't measure exactly four feet, but I'll, I'll ballpark it with my tape measure, and I'll measure to where it'd be the center. And, and sometimes there can be a pretty good size difference. Uh, you, you could have like 60 and a half and 60 and three quarters, so a quarter inch difference. Um, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll split the difference in the measurement when I can. Uh, if it's 
way off. Uh, one thing you can do is you can kind of add a helper board. So you could take a, a two by four and screw it to the side of the, the stud. Uh, that way, when it goes down, um, you've got some meat for your, your sheetrock to dig into. You don't want to have any sheetrock free floating. You wouldn't want to have uh, this be a seam, for instance, because there's there's nothing over on, on the end. It'll crack if you if you try to do it. Uh, same goes for th the corners. You don't want to have any um, really free free floating. There's a stud right here, so this little bit of an inch isn't going to make um, a big difference. But if it was more than that, uh, I would I would have screwed a another helper board beside it. Um, probably an even better example uh, is up here on the ceiling. So there's there's not a uh, board going across where these screw holes are. I mean, there's not, there's not like a truss. Um, I screwed a two by four to the top of the wall and had it hang over the edge. That way it gave me a lift to, to screw to. So there's, there's some planning you wanna make sure that all your corners um, for your ceiling, for your walls, uh, are gonna have uh, a flange for you to screw the sheetrock to before you start hanging. You don't want anything free floating because, uh, because it'll crack. Um, I'm gonna go over muddied and taping uh, tomorrow. I do have some mud started and if you have uh, kind of like a big a big hole. This is actually my dad's fault, this board. Uh, I mean, you'll blame it on me because it was cut a little bit too long. Uh, I wanted to rub this wall, as you can see, and, and we should have taken it down and, and sanded it a little bit uh, so that it'd go in there. And he thought by tapping it, it would, it would do it. And he tapped it and it broke that corner off. Um, so it wasn't a huge uh, piece that broke off. I know I'm going to have tape and mud going over it. But for kind of bigger holes like that, they make something called hot mud uh, and it dries really fast and you just mix it up with a little bit of water. Um, and it's kind of meant for that where you want some extra some extra strength. You've got kind of a bigger imperfection to, to fill. Uh, so I had to use it there. And I had a pretty big uh, kind of seam up there. So I, I did it there as well. Um, uh, another tip, uh, kind of two more things I think I want to cover, um, is when you're screwing the, the butt joints, right? I don't like to do those when I hang a sheet right away, or I may put two screws in it. I'll get all the other screws in, in the center of the board, um, and then I'll get the next piece of sheetrock on, right? And I'll screw the center up there, and then I'll come back and do the seams kind of last. That way they're, they're pressed tight together, uh, or as, as tight as you can make it, um, but it'll it'll help with ballooning. And you can see right here, uh, in, inside, you can see where the inside of the sheetrock's kind of crumbled out. It's pushed out because of this screw, and I had to keep it close to the edge so I'd hit this uh, wall stud because it's a little wavy. And by having the other board up there and pressed against it, it kind of helps that from, from ballooning out. Uh, so that's one tip. Uh, the other thing is mark your ceilings. Um, so you can see up here I've got some pencil marks above where all the studs are. So after you get the ceiling on, uh, go around the edges and anywhere there's a, a wall stud, just add a line. Um, that way when you put the first board up, you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see here uh, where it is. You can put a screw here, but then you can look up and you'll know exactly where to screw or exactly where to put um, your level to mark a straight line where you need to screw. So that's that'll save you some time. If, if you don't, you can play the tape measure game or you can uh, go drill crazy and hope you hit a stud. Uh, and I think that's about it as far as hanging. Um, I used a DeWalt drill. They do make uh, a special drill for doing sheetrock. My friend let me borrow one, but I had a cord on it and that was kind of more of a pain. Uh, they have these special tips, right? So it'll go on the screw head and it's meant, it's meant to, to go in and not blow through the, the sheetrock and kind of 
stop, stop it from going in too far. Uh, I wouldn't just buy one of these. I think they sell them in four packs at Lowe's. I would get a few because you do end up wearing out the tips if you have a big area. Um, the screws I use are number six, inch and five eighths. Uh, I think this whole box was like $20, so it's not, it's not real expensive. You're gonna want a belt. Um, it just makes life a lot easier. I'd, I'd fill up both sides uh, with screws because you do go through, through them quite fast. Uh, and I'll go over all the other tools when I, when I get to the mudding. Um, I guess one last thing uh, is the number of screws. That was another thing that I had to research some. Uh, I'll do five or six on the walls in the center. Um, you can really get away. Some people will get away with four. Uh, I'll, I'll do five on the walls, sometimes six if, if I feel like it. On the ceiling, I definitely do six. Uh, and some people even space them a little bit closer. Right, if, if you've got a seam, um, you can go a little bit crazier and, and add some more screws just for that uh, extra support. So that should cover it. Uh, I'll be mudding tomorrow once this, uh, once this stuff dries. So it's day two of my sheetrock project. Um, I'm finishing off the bathroom of my garage. Uh, yesterday I talked about how to hang sheetrock. Uh, and just to give a, a quick recap, you're gonna to wanna to start from the ceiling and then work your way down. Uh, arrange it any way you like. Try to go horizontal when you can across all the studs. Try to do whatever you can do to minimize the number of uh, butt joints. And Definitely offset your pieces. You don't wanna have uh, one seam falling on top of the, the other. So now I'm gonna talk about tools and what you need to, to tape in mud. Um, it's, it's really a, a three-step process. Some people will do it uh, in two steps, a, a day of taping, a day of mudding. Um, I find it works better to do uh, three, a day of taping, a day of mudding. The third day, do kind of a rough sand and a in a final mud because there's always going to be a few spots that uh, you're going to need to apply a little bit more. Um, and then I guess it's really a four day and then a fourth day of uh, kind of sanding uh, very well. Uh, it takes about 24 hours for this mud to dry. It's some all purpose uh, as what everyone seems to use. You can get it at Lowe's, Home Depot. Um, this is that hot mud that I used the other day. Um, it, it dries in 90 minutes. This stuff is good if, if you have like a big spot that you need to be structurally uh, sound or you, you need it to dry fast so you can start start taping. Um, you're not going to need a lot of it, but the bags are, are pretty cheap. I think it was about $10. This is $14 or $15. Uh, for, for the tape, they call it taping, but it's really like a paper. Um, just get a big roll. It's, it's not very expensive at all. This is a holder if you want to hold it on your belt to, to pull it off as you go. Um, I, I bought one and, and I did use it. It kind of has its, its flaws. It, it, it can be in the way that the tape can get tangled up. You can fling mud on the tape because it's out and exposed on your hip. Um, if you're doing a, a smaller job, you, you probably don't need that. For uh, actual mixing tray, this is a plastic one, they sell it Lowe's. I bought the plastic thinking it's, it's lighter, it's not gonna rust. Um, it does have some metal strips on the edges that you can, you can take out. Uh, and it's, it's obviously not 304 stainless, it's some kind of either mild steel or maybe 430. Um, but it, it does rust. I'd probably try the all metal tray if, if I had to do it again, but, but this does work. Uh, there's an assortment of trowels, and I really didn't know what to expect, so I bought every single one. Uh, if I had to do it all over again, uh, I would probably buy these three right here. We got, uh, I think this is an inch and a half, a four inch, and a ten inch, and they all serve kind of a different purpose. Uh, let me show you why uh, I'll, I tape with this this one right here, because this is some sheetrock, and I mentioned that they've got this indentation in the center on the edge. 
Uh, they're not going to have it around all four edges of the sheetrock. The, the butt edge doesn't have that, it's just the sides. Um, and they call this the, the flat section, and you can see it indents. Um, you can see, follow my finger. Uh, if you take too big of a uh, scraper on there, right, you can see that it's hollow underneath there, and that's going to cause the, the tape to float. You're not going to be able to, to scrape down and push that tape all the way on the, on the seam. It's going to float. Then when you're going to mud over it, you're going to have to be able to bury it by adding more compound than you need. Then when you sand, you may sand too much and expose the tape. And it's, it's just it's just not what you want to do. So if you have a four inch uh, scraper or spade, whatever it's called, um, it'll fit in between. And you'll be able to push that tape down uh, right where it needs to be. And then you'll be able to bury it easily on your second coat um, in the mud. Uh, this inch and a half works good if you need to get in a tight area. Um, I used it up at the top when doing around uh, some of the garage door stuff. And this works good for doing your, your second and third coat when you're trying to actually bury everything. It'll, it'll scrape right down the spots that stick up and it'll use that hollow area under to, to cover everything very well. This is, uh, I think it's an eight inch or six inch. Um, this can be helpful, but honestly, if you've got the 10 inch one, you don't really need this. This is for doing corners, and it sounds like it'd be really cool. Um, when you have a corner, you can, you can go right down, right? And you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. Um, I didn't find it worked very well. I, I found that a lot of times it ended up squeegeeing the mud off one side of the sheetrock and leaving too much on the other. Um, and I, I just have to fight it and keep going over and over again. Um, I didn't really use it a whole lot, still got the sticker on it. So I, I wouldn't recommend that. This is probably the most expensive thing that I bought. Um, and I didn't use this very much either. I, I just couldn't get, get the hang of it. It's a lot easier. Um, it was a lot easier for me to use this. I felt like I had more control. Uh, as an extension of my arm versus this. I just wanted to like bend your wrist. Um, so I wouldn't recommend this. I think it was the most expensive thing too. So kind of bummed on that. Uh, they call this a tray. You can get this at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. Uh, this is for mixing um, mud up and, and slopping it on here. So you can kind of scrape it off as you go. You hold that in one hand and you take the the trowel in the other and you can scrape some off put it on the wall I'll show you doing that uh, later this had a plastic handle and because it was plastic it actually wore out uh, part way through my garage so I just used a lag bolt and screwed it onto a piece of wood this is for mixing the, the compound um, you're going to want to add a little bit of water to it and honestly you really don't need this either, unless you're a, a professional and you go through a bucket of mud really, really quick. I found it was easier um, to load a bunch up in my tray and just use a sponge and squeeze some water over it and mix it uh, right in the tray with, with the four inch scraper, just slosh it back and forth a little bit. So if you wanna save some money, you don't need that. Uh, bare minimum, compound, tray, tape, you probably don't even need this if you're just doing a small job. You could work out of the tray, but I found this was uh, kind of fun to use, so I, I would recommend one of those. Uh, and then those three trial things that I mentioned. When it comes to sanding, um, you can get different sandpaper. They sell these blocks. I found that the screens work really well. Uh, so they have a 120 grit screen and that's what I would do to do the initial sand after my second coat. So after I taped and after I buried the tape and did all, all the joints, I would do a pretty rough sand with this where I didn't make it 100% perfect, knowing that I'd have to go back and skim over a few spots. And then when I did the final sand, um, I used more screen, but it's a 
It's a 220 grit versus a 120. And that's what I did my final sand on. Um, these sanding blocks made by Gator, uh, it's a little foam block. These also work well for doing um, corners. You can't exactly get in a corner very well with the paper. So I would uh, just use these for corners and those for edges. And you can get a hand thing for the screens uh, to, to attach to. Um, they also make this and it's got an uh, insert so you can put like a broom handle or something. I actually did a metal uh, rod that's extendable because I had some some high ceilings. So I think that about covers uh, all the tools and stuff. Tonight I'm going to start the taping. Um, one thing I'll do before I even start the tape is I'll go around to all of the butt joints and you can see the paper edges. They can get a little dinged up or kind of want to start peeling away um, and that's going to push your tape out and when you, you sand through it, it's got to want to sand through that spot. So I like to take a, a sheetrock knife and come in here and just kind of angle it in a little bit to, to get rid of that edge that sticks out. That way the mud has somewhere to go. I need a new blade in this, but just to get in a little bit, then nothing's gonna push your tape out, um, and you'll have a little, a little spot for the mud to stick in. Your tape will, will sit flush, and you'll get a better job, and you won't, you won't risk uh, sanding through your tape because it's pushed out. So that's it for now. All right, it's time to start taping. I already got some mud mixed up. Uh, I added a little bit of water to it. I mixed it uh, right in the tray. You could use one of those beaters if, if you wanted. Um, if you have a, a lot to do, I'd, I'd probably recommend it, but if you're doing a, a small job like a bathroom, it, it only takes like a minute to, to water it down a little bit. And this is about the consistency. It's, it's not gonna fall off, but I could, I could shake it off. Um, I like to have it a little bit uh, runnier when I do the tape. That way it's, it's not as thick and I like it a little bit thicker uh, when I'm not doing uh, the tape because it, it tends to fill in uh, better. So let me show you, I keep saying tape. Uh, this, this is the paper, right? By a big roll of it. And there's an actual little crease that started in the center of it. It's meant to, to fold for a corner one way. See, it wants to bend this way. It doesn't want to bend the other way. Um, if you're doing a corner, obviously bend it into the corner, but if you're doing a, a flat area, um, I put the nub to the back. That way the center kind of wants to, to push in. Um, if you did it the other way, you'd have this nub that's kind of fighting away from the, the, the mud and you could have a little air pocket in that channel and it won't be as good of a seal. The other thing, uh, you don't need to cut this, you can tear it. Um, there is a little trick. You can just take your uh, putty knife, put it on the paper, tear it. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. You'll have a nice looking tear. So when it comes time to, to do the tape, um, you can see I, I dug that out a little bit more. I did need a new sheetrock blade. Um, where do you start? Uh, so what I like to do is do all the butt joints first. Um, now I don't have another piece of sheetrock here. You can pretend this was sheetrock. Uh, if it was sheetrock, this would be bad because I, I have a seam here and you wouldn't want that. But this is plywood, so I don't really care. Um, if this was sheetrock, uh, I would do all of these butt joints first because when the paper comes down, the paper that would go on the seam would kind of seal that in. Uh, and then after you do the butt joints, you do what they call the flats. Uh, the flats are the, the kind of narrow part where the sheetrock is indented. 
and it's the same kind of deal. The paper that comes over from the flats will get covered up by the corners. And then I do the corners last, and I like to do the wall corners first. So you'll have the wall corners that kind of go up, right, all the way to the ceiling. And then when you do the final, your ceiling corners, those are going to overlap the wall corners to seal those in. They're going to overlap your butt joints to, to seal those in. Um, and they'll overlap any, any other ceiling uh, joints like those flats. So that's the order that I, that I go in. Um, so let's, let's apply some mud. Get my light set up a little bit. Hopefully I'm not creating too much of a shadow. So bring it in here. It's a really old ladder. My grandpa had it. It's all mud and paint. He was a carpenter. I'm sure he'd love to be helping you with this right now. Um, so I'm going to take some mud and I'm just going to put it up at the top and just kind of smear it over. Now if you look online, people, the professionals, um, they'll say work from the bottom up. That way if you have, if you have some mud uh, on your putty knife, um, it's not going to want to fall on the floor. So. That is good advice, and for some reason I can't seem to do that. I have a much easier time working from the top down. Um, and you can turn the putty knife sideways and try to really smear the mud into that seam. Add a little bit more here. And looks like I need a little up here. So what I've got right now is a nice solid uh, layer of mud. We're going to end up squeegeeing a lot of that out. Um, but we want it solid because we don't want any air pockets behind it. Um, this is some paper. I've already got it pre-cut. I'm going to make sure the, the nub is on the back. The other thing that kind of helps with those lines from uh, hanging the sheet rock is you know where the seam is when you've got it covered in mud. So it's up there. Um, I'm going to lightly press it in and just work my way down just to, to help get it set. Not really squeegeeing a, a lot off it right now. I'm just uh, getting a little bit out, making sure that it's not going to catch when I, when I do squeegee it more. I'm going to work from the, from the sides a little to get some that's smearing out. See how much I'm, I'm taking off and that goes right back into the into the tray and you'll find your tray will want to it will want to dry up the more you do this the more seams you do the longer um, it sits out so don't be afraid to add uh, a little more water to it so I've, I've kind of squeegeed the sides now I'm going to go right down uh, the middle again I'm putting a little bit of pressure on this because I, I do want to push it in um, I don't want it to be uh, sticking out very far. I'm going slower than I normally would because I'm trying to film and do everything with one hand. Um, and then I'm just going to clean up the sides once more, kind of a quick pass. Uh, so that's tape applied to... to one of the seams. Um, you don't want to squeegee all the mud out behind it. Uh, it may look a little, when it, when it starts to dry, the, the water's moisture content is soaking in with the paper, so it may look a little bit uh, bumpy, but it, it'll dry and we're gonna, we're gonna bury that on our next coat. Um, and with butt seams, uh, or end seams, whatever you want to call them, uh, the, the idea isn't just to make like a little hump from here to here to cover the seam. So like, like on a, on a flat, uh, it's indented. So you can have like a narrow, uh, line of mud and it'll only be like 
six, seven inches uh, wide and everything will be fine. On a seam like this, because it's not indented, this paper is on the most outer surface. And if you want to bury it, you actually have to apply a good amount of mud on your second coat. And if you're going to do that and you won't want the wall to look real wavy and, and have like a big bump here, you're actually going to spread it out. So when we go to do the second coat, I'm going to be applying mud about this wide. It'll be a, a thin coat and it'll get a little bit uh, deeper as it gets to the center to bury the mud. And then same thing on the other side, I'll go to about about here so it's it's almost like a foot and a half to uh, two foot wall covering but it's, it's just kind of a skim uh, on the edges um, but when applying the tape is it's just get the tape up there um, squeegee it out firmly but not too firm um, let it let it dry 24 hours and and I'll do a video when we get to the next step uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do all the other um, seams right now and I'll, I'll piece together some videos. I'm going to do an inside corner, outside corner, and uh, a flat as well. Uh, so we're going to do a seam on the ceiling in a second. I just wanted to show you this. Um, this is the other butt seam that I that I did where the ends come together. Um, and in the center here, there's plenty of mud behind it and it squeegeed out fine, but it, it did want to start bulging out a little bit in the center because um, there's a fairly decent gap between uh, these two sheets of sheetrock. So what you can do when that starts happening is simply put your finger on it and, and push it in a little bit. Uh, you'd rather have it concave than convex because if it's sticking out, it's only going to cause um, problems. Uh, for the screw heads, uh, you want them to be inserted uh, just a little bit and all you got to do is, is put some mud uh, on it and just go over it. you got to go over it twice. You want to hit them at every coat. Sometimes you really got to smush it in there. Um, it's a Phillips head so if you do it sometimes you'll, you'll go over it and you'll see it doesn't go all the way into the into the the plus sign area. Um, this one's actually sticking out a little bit. You can see that when I went over it, it, it squeeched it clean, so I'm going to have to hit that with a, a screwdriver. That one wiped off clean. Um, so I'm going to put some mud up here now. Uh, I'm not going to film putting the paper up there just because it's kind of a pain to do everything and record. Uh, but the secret is to put some on the end, squeegee the back side of the putty knife, knife out, and then when you go up here, hold the putty knife sideways and kind of smear it in and then drag it to the side. And and repeat. You really want to get it up in that opening, right? And by doing it to the side, you're you're not going to go uh, drop a lot of this on the floor. And then after you do have it to the side, you can you can take it face on and kind of lightly go over it, and that's going to give you a, a nice even coating. Um, if you tried to put a big gob. Up there just like this and spread it here watch what's happening to the outsides of the the putty knife it's, it's got to want to bubble out on the sides and it'll want to drip on the floor so put it up at a angle like this really smush it up in there between the seam wipe it sideways as far as you can go and repeat and then after you've done uh, a little ways just start back from the beginning um, and lightly lightly do a coat and you'll have a nice uh, even coat to start with. And then squeegeeing it off is, is exactly the same um, as that other joint. Here's one that uh, I've already done. You can, you can kind of see, you don't, you don't want to see the, the paper peeling away from the edges at all. You, you want it up there, you want to go all the way to the edge. 
Uh, that way the corner seam that we do later is, is going to cover it. So now we're going to do an inside corner. Uh, we're going to use paper just like we were before. Um, this time you actually want to crease it, right? It's got that line that's meant to be folded. Um, so you want to get that ready. Uh, we're going to apply the mud just like you would do it on the, the ceiling more or less, but to both sides. Um, the thing with, with uh, corners is you're going to have two sides, obviously, and one's going to overlap the other. And see how if I was to put mud here, I could slip, I could, I could tuck under it. That's the side you're, you're going to want to do first. Um, really, it, it doesn't matter 100% what side you do first, but that's what I like to do. Because otherwise, if you do this side first, you'll find that when you're trying to do this side, you don't really have a guide. Sometimes you'll slip under there and, and kind of squeegee some of the mud away. So I always do whatever side would slip under first. That's, that's the side I apply mud. Um, it's a little tricky to do in this corner. But just get some on. And you're going to start and just kind of smear it and work down. Um, the other thing is when you do do a corner, I like to add a little bit more water. Really get it... Uh, kind of more runny than anything else you do because you're going to be trying to squeegee that out on the paper. You're going to be working from both sides. Uh, and if it's, if it's thick and you're trying to, to, to squeegee that out on one side, you're, you're likely to, to put the putty knife through the paper um, and then have to kind of start all over. Just gotta set my phone down while I do that. I wish I had better lighting in here for doing this, but. So I've got some mud applied that's actually quite a bit. It's, it's kind of like a, a cool whip consistency, I would say. I'm going to take this paper, put it up in the corner, and you want to focus on getting the, the folded part, the, the very inner corner, in exactly where you want it. Um, I like using the one and a half inch knife for corners just because it's it's more square on the side whereas this is is real angled so you put this you put this up here and and you're not really touching that you just you just get a better angle with a small thing and the other thing that you'll want to do I probably should have said this while I was explaining the tools is when you buy a putty knife these corners are going to be really sharp. Uh, I like to take some sandpaper uh, or a file, just kind of round the corners a little bit. Because if you have that sharp corner and you're trying to, to go through here, you can risk um, puncturing the paper. And I'm going to do the bottom uh, part. I'm going to start somewhere in the middle and I'm just applying really light pressure. I'm going to clean up the, the edges more. And you do kind of bias the pressure. It's hard to show in, in the camera. Um, 
I'm not putting pressure straight on. I'm kind of uh, putting pressure towards the right side of here. I'm, I'm sort of twisting it in my hand just a little bit. Uh, I want to ride that that seam on the edge because if, if you go straight on you're likely to snag snag something and uh, the last thing you want to do here is is tear the paper and because it's extra liquidy uh, it just glides right out of there So the lower half's done. I'm going to do the same to the top, but afterwards I'll, I will take my large putty knife and I'm just focusing on cleaning up the edge. I'm not really focused on getting in the corner there. I've already got in the corner with, with a smaller putty knife. So there, that lower part is done. Uh, my boss so I've already got this corner done as well. So I'm gonna get on the ladder and I'll, I'll do the top side and then we'll, we'll work on an outside corner. All right, the last kind of seam that we really have to deal with is uh, outside corner. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that uh, it's nice and flush around every edge if it sticks out a little bit um, farther than the face of this surface, you can take some sandpaper um, and sand it down. You want it to be as nice of an angle as you can get it. Uh, we don't use paper on the outside corners. What we use is uh, this metal guard. Come out here in the light. Uh, you get this at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, there's different kinds that they sell, uh, but I like the kind that's got the paper outside uh, with the metal inside um, and you can cut it with some uh, shears there and what it's gonna do it's gotta go right up over here and and press in uh, and on these you want to get quite a bit of mud under them you don't want to get like a skim coating you really want to fill it in so that the entire back of this metal surface uh, is gonna have compound so I'm going to do that right now. Start from the top and really, really lay on the mud here. You can hear some of it drop on the ground. That's why the professionals always say work from the bottom up and you won't have that problem, but I'm not very coordinated when I try that way. It's probably because when I started doing it before I researched and saw someone made that comment, I'd already made the habit of working from the top down. But if you've never done this before, I would try it the other way. And if you learn that way, then So be it. Really want to get a nice thick coating on there. that metal guard will protect it if you bump into it. Since this is a garage, I have plywood on the lower half. Um, the reason I did that is for more protection. If I wanted to ever screw something into the wall, uh, I could. I didn't want to risk the sheetrock being damaged. Plus it's less mudding. All right. So, I've got quite a bit on there. Uh, actually, it looks a little bit skinny right there. I'm gonna put a little bit more here. Really try to, to get it right in the corner. 
is you want it to support that metal behind it. Okay. I'm gonna grab the piece. shove it on and you can push it right into the corner. It's got to line itself up. There. And now when you go to to scrape this, I've got the, the little putty knife here, but there's metal there and then here is, is paper. Um, so you can't really scrape from the pedal or the metal because it's got to be at an angle. You'll, you'll never um, push this in. So what you want to do is be just inside uh, the metal and kind of keep, keep a steady hand. You don't want to poke through the paper. Um, I like to make this compound just as uh, liquidy as, as the inside corner. And we put a ton of compound behind there. So that's going to ooze out. You can see it kind of makes a nice transition, a beveled, uh, a beveled edge. Make sure that the corner doesn't want to pop back out either and really taking a lot of that compound under there but I've, I've seen corners of a, a house where you'll you'll see it's got a metal corner and it's it's cracking or um, you can sometimes see it delaminate and that's because they, they skimped out on the the compound you want a lot of compound behind this especially if it gets bumped you don't want it to be hollow um, behind it. So the corners are done. Those are the only outside corners that I have. Uh, now I'm gonna go around and make sure I got all the screw heads uh, done. And then I'm gonna do my ceiling to wall corner. And those are exactly like a wall corner um, that we did. Just it's going horizontal and instead of vertical, obviously. Uh, that's it, I'll be back uh, tomorrow when we do the second coat. So it's actually two days later. Um, I came out here last night hoping to do it, but some of the mud was still a little bit wet, so I I wanted to give it uh, another night of drying. Um, I've already done a little bit on the second coat, just so I'm familiar with it. It's been about two years, I guess, since I've done any sheetrocking. Uh, I'm gonna go over the butt joint right now. Um, that's what we wanna cover, and when we do this there's kind of two ways that that you can do it I like to try to do it all at once um, where I'm gonna put a thick coat on between like here and here smooth it down right and then afterwards I'm gonna add some mud over here I'm gonna add some mud over here then I'm gonna smooth it down a little more in the center and work and work my way out so that I'll have a pretty big area where I've got mud on the wall um, alternatively you could just worry about the center, just worry about covering here to here. Don't even bother uh, smoothing the edges out, just leave them a little bit ribbed so that they stick out. And then if you came back another day when that's all dry, then you'd be able to attack it from the side and you'll be able to use that, that raised part of the sheetrock um, to, to guide your putty knife down to kind of give you an angled uh, pitch off the side. That's an extra day and I'm trying to get this done fast so I'm going to try to 
take a little bit more time uh, doing this just so I don't have to wait an, an extra day. So this is the tray. Uh, normally I'd hold this in my left hand, um, but that's a little hard to do and hold the camera. I'm using the 10 inch blade. And if you look at this just from kind of the use, it's, it's a little bit curved and it, it came flat, but it, it just curves when you use it. Uh, and that curve actually helps out. Um, I find it, it makes it so you don't have like a sharp edge and it gets curved when you're trying to feather the edge out. And you can see you put a little bit of pressure here because you wanna, you wanna s smooth it out. Um, and that's the way I'm gonna hold this is with the curve. I don't wanna go the other way so it's digging in on, on the sides. So let's start. Get some mud up here. Start right up near the top. Just try to get it on the wall. And this isn't really watered down. I added a little bit in the top of the bucket and kind of flung it around with a putty knife, but it's, it's not as uh, near as watered down as when I was doing the taping. And you can see because it's not as watered down, it wants to kind of leave uh, some air bubbles and that's, that's fine right now. I'm not, I'm not focused on getting this smooth, I'm just focused on getting mud on the wall. And it looks like I'm going to add a little bit more at the top because it's a little more. Clean the putty knife. Alright, so that's what I've got now. I've got quite a bit of mud up there, uh, probably more than you think. And I'm going to take it right from the top. And I'm just going to run the putty knife down right over the center uh, of the tape. I'm putting some medium pressure. You can put a little bit more pressure on it because it's uh, not as runny. So I'm taking some off. And I'm gonna do that again just, just lightly this time to try to get some of the bubbles out. So this is kind of at the point where um, you could clean up the edges just a little bit uh, and you could leave it and then come back uh, the next day and, and uh, add some mud to the sides. But I'm, I don't really wanna wait another day so I'm gonna add some mud over here now. Really trying to focus to make sure that I've got it up at the top. And I'm kind of working my way in to out. Not worried about getting it too smooth, just worried about getting mud on the wall. And if I, uh, my thing because the handle broke it did have a flush 
bolt that went through it and I had to put a lag bolt so it kind of sticks up there. Um, so that makes it a little challenging. Someday I'm going to deal with that. It's kind of hard to put a, a normal bolt into a piece of wood on the bottom though. It needs to be tapped and threaded. So that's why I use the lag bolt. And the side effect is it sticks up. I don't know if they make cone lag bolts or not. All right. So now I've got a bunch of mud uh, up, up here. You can see I have kind of a spot there that's lacking a little bit. So I'm gonna add some more. So right there, the center is kind of smooth. The side is, is kind of stretched out. And now I'm gonna work uh, with the putty knife um, to work from the center out. Uh, I'm not gonna get the center too much because I still need to do this other side and I'm gonna have to get some more mud in the bucket. But come up here. And I am putting a little bit of twist on the putty knife. I'm kind of twisting towards the outside that way I'm not taking off too much material uh, over the tape. I don't wanna, I don't wanna scrape down the tape because then you kind of get a start over. And now I'm gonna do the same thing a little bit further over and I'm putting pressure again on the right side. You may be able to, to hear it. You can actually see right here where um, the right edge is sticking up a little bit more than the left. This is about how much mud I'm taking off. And now I'm gonna go over that again, but I'm not gonna push as hard. I'm still gonna put a little bit of pressure on the left. I'm just gonna let it kind of glide. This will help get rid of um, the bubbles. See, I didn't take as much off. I'm going to repeat again, exact same thing, just moved over a little bit to the right. And then I'm going to do it again. This time I'm, I'm off the, the side of where the mud is. I'm on the, the green board. Um, so I'm going to push quite a bit harder on the right. And I do that because I want to give it a transition point that, that doesn't have um, that doesn't have a lot of height where the, the sheetrock starts. Uh, if I did leave a little bit of height there, I'd, I'd have to sand it down. And anytime that you try to sand that down, you're also going to hit the green board. And if you spend a lot of time uh, sanding that, you may sand through the paper. And, and I don't want to do that. Um, here, here in the center, you can see it's, it's spread out to here. At the top is spread out to there, but in the center, um, it's in a little bit, right? Let's zoom out. You'll, you'll kind of see how, it's, how it goes further on the bottom and the top, but the, the center, it doesn't. Um, so I want to try to keep that line uh, roughly around the same place. So I'm going to add a little bit of mud, right? right in the center. Then I'm gonna repeat that last pass where I'm kind of pushing hard. So that's that set. I'll probably drag it. Let me drag it over there once more. Sometimes when you try to smooth it on that last pass, you make it look worse than it did before. Um, but that that's it. The tape is buried. I'm gonna do the right or the left side uh, off camera, and I'll clean up the center a little bit.
because I'm going to have to go over it lightly when I do the left side. But the, the idea is you want to bury the tape. You don't want to you don't want to see through the tape um, and you want to transition it out a ways so that if you are looking down this wall you're not going to see like a, a sudden hump you want like a nice gradual uh, slope now if you can see this let me turn the light this is another one uh, that i did above the door jam this one's already started drying see i did a little bit better job making the line a lot nicer here um, and it's just going to be that gradual transition and this stuff does sand a little bit so where you see uh, kind of the differences in the mud that'll that'll sand off in about five seconds with that with that uh, screen paper all right so that's how you you go over the end joints Now we're going to talk about uh, doing the flats. This is that seam uh, where you've got the sheetrock that comes in as an indent on both sides. Um, you can hold your, your spade up and see that there's uh, kind of a, a gap between it. That's what we want. If you used a really wide scraper to try to embed the tape, um, it wouldn't be embedded enough and it'd be tricky to cover this uh, in mud but because it's bedded properly, um, this is probably the easiest seam there is to do. Uh, it's probably the hardest seam there is to film and do on a ladder, um, but I'm gonna try. So I've got my mud here. And you just wanna get the mud up there Right? Just spread some. Get a little bit more up. I'm not going to do the whole seam, but I'm just going to do kind of a section. And then it's pretty much as easy as just dragging the scraper, making sure that each side. Um, stays above uh, above the indentation and you're burying the tape and then what you can do for the side is again put pressure on the opposite edge of the knife that the mud is on so the right side of the knife so I'm putting all my pressure and I'm just kind of cleaning up that edge and that's that's to make sanding easier I'm going to come to the other side, exact same thing. Pressure's on the left side of the knife on this side. There. So repeat that process for the full seam. Um, make sure that the, the tape is buried. If you do have a spot where the tape sticks up a little bit, maybe you didn't bed it properly, um, you would bury it similar to like a wall but don't don't make it as wide um, when you clean up the edges you can kind of uh, put a little bit more mud in the center and when you clean up the edges uh, try, try to just make sure there's a, a skimming left over the tape but if you embedded it properly you shouldn't have that problem um, i've already done a seam over here let me show you so this one I did earlier, and that's still drying, uh, but those, those are the easiest ones to do. So if, if you do want to build some confidence, maybe start with, with those first. Uh, I just realized I actually forgot kind of an important note when doing these uh, flats, um, is the angle of the the putty knife because remember when I said it it was curved and that works well for for doing uh, on the edges and putting pressure and applying um, when you do the the seam if you use that curved edge and you're dragging it along you're technically taking out um, some mud in the middle of where the where the tape is because both edges hit and the center of it sticks up a little bit further so when you do do the center um, 
take take the the angle the curved part and and flip it around so that the center part is actually a little bit uh, deeper versus digging out of the center. Then when you drag when you drag it along, uh, you're not gonna want to scrape off the tape because the middle's not digging deeper than the edges. And then flip it for when you clean up the sides because then you're using the curve to your advantage where you're not going to be digging out of the center. You're going to be giving yourself a nice kind of transition. Uh, so that's, that's a, a tip I should have mentioned in, in the previous video. All right, now I'm going to go over an inside corner. Uh, I'm going to be using the same 10 inch uh, putty knife scraper, whatever you want to call it. And the thing with inside corners uh, is easier if you tackle an inside corner that includes a wall inside corner or ceiling inside corner in two days. Um, if you've got a big area to do, um, that's, that's what I would recommend doing. Uh, if you are got a small area and you kind of just want to get it done, you can spend a little bit more time on the corners. It's a little frustrating, um, but you can do both sides of the seam. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread uh, we're gonna spread mud on one side of the corner, right? And we're gonna scrape it. And when you scrape it, it's gonna be fairly easy because this wall is gonna act as a, a guide for the putty knife. You can put pressure on the right corner of the scraper, and you can get a nice skim coat over this corner. Uh, but then if you came in and you said, okay, I've got that side of the corner done, now I want to do this side, you're going to scrape that skim coating off that you just put on that side of the, the wall. Um, and that, that can be frustrating if you try to do both at once. Uh, they have the special corner um, putty knife, and sometimes that works well on parts of the wall, and then you'll get to a section and uh, it's, it's leaving too much on one side or it's completely scraping the other side clean uh, and that and that's frustrating too. So if, if you have the time, you don't want to rush, you don't want to get frustrated, uh, it's a big job. Just do one side uh, at a time, let it dry, come back the next day and, and do the other. And that's what I've done here just to kind of show um, I've got one side done. Once that's dry, I'll come and do the left side of the wall. Uh, over here, I keep turning the light because it's dark in here. Over here, I've done I've done both sides, and you start by doing one side just like you would if if you planned on doing one side, um, and then you do the other side. And you, when you come down, you try to keep it close but don't touch it. Uh, normally, you do end up bumping it though. And then I find if you kind of put just a line of uh, mud on the very, very fine edge and you kind of dip it here and pull back, dip it, pull back, dip it, pull back. Um, you can you can get it to where it's, it's done. It won't look as clean as if you did it in two days, but you're gonna sand the mud off anyway. So once it's done and painted, no one's gonna be able to tell. Um, so let's go back and I'm gonna do this this corner, make sure I get some light in here. And I start with just loading it up, get it up at the top. Make sure you get it up in the corner. And because this is thicker, it's a little tricky to, to drag down the wall. But that's what you want to try to do. <laughs> these co these corners too, they they're not going to be dragged out as far as if you did uh, a, one of those butt joints, right? So they only have to go out a few inches. So I get it loaded up. You can steal some just by scraping it down the edge if you need. Reapply it here. You just want to have a kind of thick coating there. And 
I think that's good. Then clean your knife off well, go all the way up to the top. I'm gonna lightly run it. Again, I'm putting pressure kind of on the right side of the knife, but not as, not, not too much for the first pass. And we're just kind of smoothing, smoothing it out. We're gonna have to run down it again. When you get down to the bottom, uh, kind of let off the pressure because sometimes you can clean the, clean the bottom corner. We don't want that. So clean off the mud and we're gonna repeat. And then one more time, but this time I'm gonna put a lot more pressure on the right, right side of the knife. Oops. And that's, that's about it. You can try to go over it a little bit more if you want to try to make it perfect. Sometimes when you do that, you end up making it worse. But there, that's, that's a corner for you. Let that dry and then do the other side the next day. Um, or you can try to you can try to tackle it the same day if you want. Worst case, try it. You can you can always try stuff with mud. If if you're not happy with the way it looks, you can scrape it all off and then uh, start over, and then do it in the two day approach. Um, but that's that's what you got to do for every inside corner. Uh, while we're here, I guess I'll I'll do the outside corner as well. Um, so here. Uh, I had two outside corners and I'm filling in the center with mud because the corners stick out a little bit. So normally you'd transition them, but because I have two corners here for the shower uh, stub out, um, I, don't, I didn't want each of them coming to a point in the center. And it worked pretty well because you can use each, each as a guide. I'm um, going to have to hit that probably again once it, once it dries, but it's... Kind of the exact same approach. Get some mud up there. So I'm just loading it up. Get it on the wall. Okay. Then for this, uh, you're gonna use that that corner as, as kind of a, a guide, and you're kind of making a very slim um, triangle almost. See. So Take quite a bit off. You can see where it wasn't completely press, pressed in in a few spots, like this, this corner. So I'm just going to dab some there, dab some here. Then repeat. Doing that does kind of send a little bit around the corner. That would sand off easy, but I'm just gonna run down the front very lightly. And then again from the side, very lightly. So, 
those are pretty easy, hard to screw up um, when you've got something on the left that you use as a guide and something on the right. All right, so that's inside and outside corners. All right, it's sanding time. Uh, I've already started and done some, but I left a part of the wall uh, not done so I can show it on video. Uh, I'm using the screen mostly, which is right here. This is a 120 screen. Uh, this works good for cutting down fast. And uh, I'm using these foam blocks for the corners. And I saw these at Lowe's. I think they're made by Gator. And there's two different grits. There's, uh, a, a really, there's a fine grit and a rough grit. This is the rough grit one. Uh, and I do have the fine grit that I'll, I'll use later on uh, after kind of the third coat. Uh, I usually start with the ceilings first. Uh, again, this is 120 grit. And when you do the ceiling, uh, extend the pole longer. You don't, you don't want to be reaching uh, way above your head. You almost want your hands down near your, near your hip when you do it. Uh, the more you have your, your hands in the air, the more tired they're going to be. And you don't need to, to push or, or dig in. Um, let, the, let the sander do the work, right? And by having it long, you can kind of stand in one spot and just kind of sway your hips and, and not move your arms a whole lot. Uh, but I'll do, I'll do the ceilings first. And you'll notice when you, you get near the edge, right? If you look at like a section of sheetrock that, that hasn't been sanded, it's, it's kind of a smooth color. And, and where you do sand, it's, it kind of gets scratched up a little bit. And you, you want a, a smooth transition. You don't want to see um, any, any edge. You don't want anything that you can uh, feel. And this is an actual butt joint uh, that was there, and you can see how, how wide it is. It's not just covering the seam, it's going out about eight to 10 inches on, on each side of it. Uh, so I'm gonna turn the light and show a section. Uh, these are actual screw holes, and all you do is put it up there, go one direction and the other, and I'm not really putting a lot of force on this. I'm kind of just letting it do the work. And you, you do want to keep going and try to uh, attack it from all angles. Uh, you can see that around all of this, it's, it's, it's been touched. You can kind of see the whiteness from where it's sanded. Uh, you, you don't want to constantly attack it from this angle because you're not going to necessarily get um, the smooth transition here or here. So the important thing is to do every direction. Uh, this is another one of those butt joints. You can see how wide it is. Um, I know the tape is, is buried uh, in the center. So I'm going to start just going up and down there and then work my way back and forth. And you want to get out. You want to get out any uh, imperfections. You can see there. Uh, it's just from the trowel mark where uh, the the trowel kind of overlapped. You want to work all of that, uh, all of that out. So here here's the trowel mark right here. Not really pushing, just letting it do its thing. Also, it's important to wear a mask because you're going to create a ton of dust. I know they're a little bit hard to find right now with COVID-19, uh, but you want get, to get those lines out. And definitely, if, if you do go to the gym or something, don't do any arm workouts uh, before doing this. Not recommended. Um, and that's more or less it. The corners are a little trickier. Uh, that's where you use the foam block. And I did all of my corners in the same night, and that meant I had to kind of get more mud in there 
um, that I wanted because I didn't want to risk squeegeeing off the other side. So when you do that, one of the things that'll happen is all that mud in there, you'll get like a crack that appears on the outside. Uh, the tape is so good, this silver layer of mud there. Um, it's just that there's so much mud here and I was trying to, to dry it, I didn't know what kind of wall to adhere to so it cracks in the center. Uh, and that's just taking a foam block. And I'm not really pushing on it, just letting it do the cutting in that that corner, because I'm not pushing on it, I'm not pushing it in there. Uh, the corner is nice and solid. Just gotta work it both ways carefully. You don't really wanna expose the tape. That's what I'm trying to avoid. You'll be able to see the tape. Uh, if you get down to it, it'll kind of have a, a yellowish hue to it. If you do expose the tape, it's, it's not the end of the world. You could hit it with a little bit more mud. Uh, but honestly, when you primer the walls, that's that's going to do a, a good enough job covering the tape if a little bit uh, is exposed. Um, and if you do start to see the tape, like if you start to see the tape here but not here, um, you'd want to focus more on this wall. You can also turn... Uh, the foam this way so that the the non-gritty end is up against this wall so then you're you're going to take material off this wall and not really on this wall you could probably even also cut cut this right in half if you wanted a longer um, a longer edge so I'll carefully work that seam out if you get this Seam in a, a two-night process where you did one wall and then you did the other, um, you're, you probably have little risk of, of going into the tape. So what I did makes it a little, a little bit more challenging, but it, I saved two days of of drying because I want to get this bathroom painted and uh, done before the weekend. And you want to feather edge every every side um, you, you can see here you, you can you can feel it so there now now you can't you can't feel it you can see that all the the green board around it's been sanded um, so it's it's just repeating that wear a mask uh, glasses are probably a good idea if you have All right, so I've got all the sanding dust uh, swept and vacuumed up uh, from last night's sanding. Um, it's got two coats that have been uh, sanded, and it, at this point, probably 80% uh, of the work is, is done. I am going to do a, a third coat but only in kind of spots where it's needed. Uh, all this, the screw heads don't really need to be touched up. Um, there's a lot of uh, corners that are fine, uh, but you're gonna see in some spots, like right here on the, the corner, there's, there's some imperfections, uh, just because you had to apply quite a bit of mud there. And uh, I, I didn't quite have everything covered, so I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit those spots uh, that need it. Um, here you can see there's some pinholes. And on this third coat, I've, I've added uh, quite a bit of water to it to kind of make it more like a, a skim coat. I'm gonna hit just certain areas of it. And I'm not gonna put a whole lot of mud on, just kind of uh, enough to just cover it. And Really gotta scrape it in. And, and you can actually uh, see those those pinholes are, are covered up. You can still kind of see them because uh, they're filled with mud now and it's wet and it's it's darker. But that's that's what I'm gonna do. It's, it's just a skim coat kind of over everything. And then a few spots that I need to go a little bit thicker, I'll, I'll do that. 
uh, where it's needed. And this shouldn't take long. This, this may take like half an hour uh, and it won't be a lot of work to, to sand this off. All right, so the final coat of mud has been applied and that last coat was just a, a real skim coat. It was kind of slap it on, uh, s scrape it off and it didn't really leave a lot, if any, on there. It just filled in any kind of imperfections that were uh, left. It only took about half an hour uh, to do. And I did every seam basically. I didn't touch up the, the screw head holes or anything. It was just anywhere there is a seam, I kind of went over it real quickly. Put a real thin layer on the putty knife and just spread it across and then I cleaned up the material with a, a few more dry wipes over it and any imperfection it, it filled in. So it does need a final sand um, and this sand is going to be with a 220 grit screen. Um, I've got one on the ceiling scraper and this is uh, another sanding block that you can get from Lowe's or Home Depot. This is the not the rough one, the more fine grit. And this sand is going to be pretty quick as well. You're not going to have to spend a whole lot of time on it um, because there's hardly any material from the last coat of mud that you did. It's more to to clean any of uh, imperfections up from the, from the last coat of mud you did on it. But you also want to hit all the, the screw hole areas or any anywhere you, you didn't even apply mud because that, that would have been sanded with uh, the 120 grit, which is, which is rougher, and you want to smooth out those sanding marks to, to 220. And then after that is done, I'm going to take a sponge. I'm going to clean up the floor first. I'm going to take a sponge, uh, put it in some water, rinse it real well so it's, it's just damp, and I'm going to wipe down all the walls. You want to get all the dust off because um, you don't want it there when you primer. And when you're doing that, if you spot any imperfections, right? If you spot somewhere that needs to be sanded, you can you can touch, you, you can sand it a little bit more. If you spot like a divot, something that should have some filler, um, you can circle it with a pencil and come back to it. You could use a little bit more mud. Um, I would recommend instead of mud though, if it's just one or two little spots, uh, just some of this like patch, patch and paint. It's, it's lightweight spackle. Um, for any last minute imperfections because you don't want to wait until the mud dries unless you have Unless you have time, but you can throw some of that spackle stuff on and it'll be dry in like 20 minutes um, Give it a real light sand and just those uh, Two spots or so and then you're ready to primer I wanted to do a quick video uh, after I've got it primered. Um, this is two coats of primer over the green board using bare primer and sealer for drywall. I really like this stuff. Uh, when I did the rest of the garage, um, I only used one coat of primer sealer and that's mostly because uh, the paint that I'm using also bare is paint and primer all in one. This is just a standard uh, satin white color that they sell, nothing that's to be mixed. So the primer in here uh, plus the one coat of sealer works really well on uh, normal sheetrock. Um, I did two coats of the satin paint out there. But in here, because it's that green board, um, one coat of primer didn't really cover that well you can still kind of see some areas where uh, the, the green's kind of showing through, uh, but the two coats of paint are gonna help in here. Uh, but because there is green um, and didn't cover uh, as well as normal white sheetrock, I did two coats of the primary sealer in here. So here's my final video. Everything uh, has been primered 
and I've done two coats of the the satin paint on it. Got all my outlets installed. I uh, got my door mounted. I'm in the process of painting that still and doing the trim around it. Ends up probably a little bit better lighting over here. Uh, but everything looks really good. I'm happy with the way it came out. Nice crisp corners. Can't see any tape or anything bleeding through. Can't see any screw heads. Uh, when it does come time to choose a paint, uh, I'd recommend a satin or uh, a more flat paint. If you do something too gloss, glossy, like a semi-gloss, it's going to show every little imperfection. Probably as glossy as you can get um, with not showing everything uh, is, is satin. That's what I'd recommend. Uh, but a flat, a flat paint would also work well. It would, it would hide hide stuff a lot better, but it's a little bit more difficult to, to clean if you rub up against a, a flat based paint, it's, it's more likely to leave a mark and it'll be harder to wipe off, whereas uh, a satin or something with a hint of gloss, um, it'll still do a good job hiding everything and it'll be easier to wipe down. Um, and this being a, a garage and I'm going to have a sink over here that could splatter, uh, I, d I decided to use a uh, sign. So that said, I hope this has been helpful. Um, there's different approaches to do it. You can find what works best uh, for, for you. And applying tape and mud is, is one of those things where if you're not sure you want to do it yourself, right? Um, you can go out and you can, you can buy a bucket of mud for $15 and you can spend $20 on some basic tools and tape uh, and try it. If, if you're not happy with the results or it's too frustrating, um, you, can, you can hire someone to do it. They'll use your bucket of mud. It's not like you've really got a lot of money invested in it. They'll use your, your tape that you bought, which is pretty cheap anyways. Um, and that's kind of how I got started. Um, I had actually hired someone to do it and they ended up uh, backing out and, and not being able to do it. And then the next person uh, that I had originally contacted said he was pushed back three or four weeks. Um, that was kind of too long for me. So I said, oh, I'm going to try it myself and see if, see if I can do it. And uh, it, it worked out well. I saved quite a bit of money, probably around eight or $10,000 doing it myself. Um, so that allowed me to kind of pay myself and buy something I wanted for, for my time.